Hallelujah, hallelujah. I love that song. Um, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <sighs> well, if you have your Bibles, I won't be before you long. <sighs> We're going to be in the book of Galatians, chapter number five. We'll be wrapping up in just a second because we're going to talk about something um, in a little bit that's very near and dear to my heart. Galatians chapter number five. Amen. I wanted to um, back up for just a second while you're turning there. Um, I want you to know, and I, I always say this, that when we say stuff like the stuff that we're doing, we're celebrating, but we're not, you know, some people like to get up and brag and boast about what they're doing. That's not the purpose of me saying that. The purpose of me saying that is to elicit help. It takes a lot to do the things that people do, uh, like hand out stuff to the food pantry. And so although we're celebrating the fact that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think, we actually use that as a way of saying, look, we, we need you. If there's any doubt as to whether we need you to get this done, we need you. Every man, woman, boy, or girl, we need you. Amen. That, such is the gospel of the kingdom. If you have your Bibles, when you have it, I always being a former soldier, uh, you know, um, when you have it, just Galatians chapter number five, verse number 16. Amen. We're going to do 16. And then we're going to keep going. I'm going to read a little bit and then I'll be done. Amen. <clears throat> Oh, but we honor the Lord on today. Oh, one thing real quick. Father, we bless you for this day, God. I thank you, God, for your healing virtues. God, on this week, God, even on the last few days, God, there were at right now the total is 149 people who died, Father, in a stampede in, uh, in, in China. I think it was, God. God, I speak life over those uh, families. And God, I pray, God, your provision over them. I pray, God, that your love would overshadow them, God. I pray, Father, that they would receive your love, Father. I pray that they would come to know you in a real way. God, I bless you, God. I speak peace over them. I speak peace over that area, Father, and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Forgot to do that. Y'all ready? Um, Galatians chapter number five, verse number 15. But I say, walk by the Spirit. And you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against, against the spirit. And the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other. To keep each other from doing the things that they want to do. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisiveness, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against such things, there is no law. Father, we bless you. We praise you. We lift you up. We magnify your name. God, there is none like you. There's none like you in heaven or in earth. God, you deserve all the glory. God, I speak life over everything that I'm about to say, God. Make me the first hearer of your word. Your word stands settled in heaven forever. Thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You can be seated. Wanted to talk to you for a few minutes. We're going to begin to talk about something that we've been doing over the last three, 
years um, consecutively almost uh, in this church in a, in a little bit. And I'm gonna elicit some help from some of the ministers, and some of the mothers and some of the people in the church. But I wanna finish up this one. Um, we've been dealing with God. And the Lord asked me a while back to describe him. And I felt like we failed miserably because there's no describing an undescribable being. Our God has always been champion. Our God has always been king. Our God has always been ruler. Our God has always been who he is. And the moment we begin to describe him, the moment that we start lacking, because if we say he's good, he's been better than that. If we say he's the same God, then we have to explore what God has he been. If we say he's healer, he's always been healer. We say he's a conquering king, he's always conquered. Because our God is just... And so when you say the name of Jesus, when you say our God, when you say our God, when you say God, then there's several things that come along with it. And I told you last week that when you begin to talk about the fruit of the spirit, when you begin to talk about the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is more than just uh, 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 the calamity sometimes that we do in our emotions. Holy Spirit is more than just speaking in tongues. Holy Spirit is more than just us laying hands on the sick and see them recover. Holy, now, if, that, if it was just those things, I, hey, great. But Holy Spirit is more than just that. Holy Spirit is more than just a dance and a shout. Holy Spirit is more than just passing out at the altar. Holy Spirit is more than anything that we, because he's great. And one of the things the Holy Spirit does is Holy Spirit calls those things to our remembrance that the father would have. If I tell my kids all the time, even in school. And whenever people come at me about it, I say, well, you knew who I was before I came here. Holy Spirit can call things to your remembrance. If you study, Holy Spirit can call even test things to your memory while you're taking a test. Holy Spirit, when he speaks, he speaks the power from the Father. Holy Spirit, whew, I can't even begin to explain. I told you the law first mentioned. That in the beginning, you have Father, Son, you have Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is always active, always waiting, always there. And so I need to finish this and let you know I started off telling you that everything started off with love. From out of love should emanate joy. And then from out of joy, the peace of God. And I'm telling you, there's been days when I've needed the peace of God, which passes all understanding. And I'm telling you, when I needed it, it guarded my heart and my mind. When situations come up and, and you need the peace of God, then things begin to happen. And then you got love, joy, peace, patience. You got kindness. You got goodness. And all those things are a part of the character and nature of God. And if we are the people of God, then we should begin to display all those characters. Well, this one is a little rough one for me. The last one is self-control. Lord, help us, Holy Ghost. You see, the works of the flesh are evident. And he listed a whole bunch of them, didn't he? Listed a whole bunch of them. Works of the flesh. But a lot of times, we spend more time focusing on the flesh so much that we have a tendency to give it power. Oh, my flesh. Oh, I'm just, I'm just. And, and we have a whole lot of time and we spend it on talking about the fleshly things that we do. We spend a whole lot of time dealing with those things and church folk, they, I'm gonna say this, so I, I can't go, I, pray for me. Church folk, sometimes we make everything more powerful than God. I hear church folk all the time, well, you can't do this and you can't do this on that day and you can't do this on this day and you can't do this on this day. I have one, let me be honest, I'm not taking a cheap shot, not in here, not in here, not in here. It was somewhere else. Um, but you really gonna have an event on Halloween, near Halloween? Yeah. You know, Halloween is Satan day. The devil is a lie. That's the Lord's day. Were you really going to uh, have an event? No, I'm not celebrating Halloween, but I am having an event close to it. Well, you know what that means? Yeah, I do know what Halloween means. But let me be clear. 120 people every minute die. And many of them without knowing Christ. And so what I simply, my response is, when people stop dying on that day, I'll stop ministering on that day. 
But until then, as long as, long as he's willing to work, I'm willing to work. And let me be clear, the fruit of the Spirit is all those things, but the Holy Spirit, he, he has us operate in what's called self-control. I'm a little nervous about this, so self-control. Self-control is an interesting thing because it implies that we have the ability to control our flesh. Now, 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 I know, I know some of us, we got this thing where we, well, but I got to cuss somebody out now. I got to fuss at somebody now. I got to say the first thing that come to my mind now. I got to do, no ma'am, no sir. You don't have to say the first thing that come to your mind. Do you know a sign of immaturity is a lack of control over your tongue? A lack of immaturity, I mean, a sign of immaturity is a lack of control over your tongue or the, you, you, we call it being frank. I'm frank. No, you're not frank. That ain't even your name. I, I'm just blunt with what I say. And if I'm, no, you can control what you say. You get gratitude out of what you say. But the fruit of the spirit is self-control. And, and, and self-control uh, means that we don't have to participate in some of those things. And I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm going to skip through all the, all the stuff about what we do when we don't operate in self-control because he already listed all those. Rivalry, gossip. We got to be the first one with the tea. I got to be the first one to tell all the bad news. All those things, the, the Bible makes it clear. Now, a lot of those things, he, he said, they won't inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is. And see, I came to tell you that when you operate in love, all the fruit of the Spirit, I start off with love, the love of the Father, and the love through the Father, and they end in self-control. Let me be clear. They start off with love, and they end in self-control. They start off with love and they end with self-control. So if you got something to say, sir or ma'am, and it's not sprinkled and seasoned in love, then you're not operating in self-control. If you got something to say or if you're doing something, no matter what it is, and it's not birth in love, the first and greatest of the commandments, love the love of God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself, if, if it's not seasoned in love, and it's not seasoned in grace, then it is not the fruit of the spirit and we are not operating in self-control. I hear a lot of people and we're doing a lot of condemning and we're doing a lot of saying, but there's no redemptive value in it because we're not saying it to bring people to repentance or to bring people to Christ. We're saying it to make people feel bad about what they're doing. People know what they're doing and people know how bad it is what they're doing most of the time. But if we're not operating in trying to bring them to the redemptive focus of knowing God and knowing who he is, then, then we're operating in the flesh. It don't matter what, what message we give. If we're not doing it for the sole purpose of bringing people to know him and telling the truth for the people to know him, then we're operating in the flesh. And I see a lot of, well, I'm going to expose this. Why? So you can be the one to expose it? All glory to you for doing it, right? And see, and what we got to do is we got to begin to operate in that thing. We got to begin to operate in that thing. Here's the reason why I say that whenever I ask people who, who ask me why we do certain things. People, Christians, sometimes we have a problem with everything. I got a problem with Christmas trees. I got a problem with Christmas. I got a problem with this. I got a problem with that. And I tell them, I said, if your loved one, you only had one opportunity to reach them, and it was on that day, would you want somebody to minister to them? You see, the, the, the thing, a lot of times, the problem with our flesh is everything comes back to us. Everything comes back to us. Everything comes back to us. Even the anointing that we have on our lives, it can't come back to bringing all the glory to us. I, I, I just had a picture. Imagine, y'all remember when Jesus told the guy, there's a coat over there. He's tied up in the crossroads where two rows meet. I got to go ahead and go through this for a moment because I'll keep thinking about it. He's tied up at a crossroads where two worlds meet. He said, if anybody asks you why you have need of him, tell them that the Lord has need of him. Remember, they loosed the coat. They brought him to Jesus. Jesus got on the donkey and rode the donkey into town. Y'all remember what they were doing? 
they were throwing olive branches at the donkey. Remember, they were throwing olive branches and they were throwing stuff and they were laying down saying, Hosanna, glory be to God in the highest. Remember that? Now, don't get it twisted. They did all that stuff to Jesus on, on Wednesday, but they crucified him on Friday. But y'all remember, can you imagine being the donkey and you walking through there with Jesus on your back, thinking that everything is about you while they're throwing the olive branches? Oh, they're throwing the olive branch. No, the anointing is riding on your back, sir. They're not throwing any branches at you. They're throwing them at the master. They're praising God. But we have a tendency as pastors, as ministers, as leaders, as teachers to think that, it, that it's all about us. And it's not. It's about the glory of God. And one of the, the, the things that shows a lack of discipline or a lack of self-control is that we think everything is about us. Everything. But the fruit of the spirit, the last one is self-control. When you have self-control, you embody all of the previous ones before it. You, can, you embody love. You embody the joy. You embody the peace. You embody the patience. You can't have patience without self-control. But see, the problem is, if, if we try to do it without the power of God, then it still ends up as a work of the flesh. Even if, I know this may sound hopeless in a sense, but if even if we control ourselves without the power of God, then it still counts as a work of the flesh. Let me put it more clearly. Anything you do without the focus of God, it can come up as a work of the flesh if, we, if we're not careful. I see people with great marriages, but they don't honor God. You may have a good marriage, but you're still not giving God the glory in your marriage. Right? I see people with a lot of money, but God didn't get no glory out of that. I see people with a lot of things, and they're doing a lot of good things. And, you can, and, and the scripture makes it clear that though I give my money to feed the poor, if I do this and I do that, and if it's not with love, I'm a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Anything we do, if it's not birthed in the love of God and ending in self-control, we're not operating in the fruits of the spirit. Self-control is an amazing thing when you have. Have you ever had anybody just talking to you any old kind of way and they're talking to you reckless? And you know you probably could hurt their feelings and say something. And the Holy Spirit will say, shh, don't say nothing. And you'd be sitting there, boy, and a part of you'd be steaming. But then the Holy Spirit, could start, if you quiet a long, long enough, the Holy Spirit will start to show you things. And the Holy Spirit will show you when he gives you the permission to open your mouth exactly what to say to end the whole thing. You got to wait on Holy Spirit. And here's the way we do that thing. Remember, I told you that the Holy Spirit, I said everything starts out in love and ends in self-control. Let me give you the cheat code. When it starts off in love, that means that you receive the love of the Father and that you receive it enough that you begin to operate in it. God, I receive the way you see me. And if you can receive the way God sees you, then you can have a, a sense of how he sees other people. Sometimes all it takes for us to operate in self-control and to see the Holy Spirit move in our lives is just to go back and realize how ratchet we were before we met Holy Spirit, before we met the Father. If all you know about how nasty you can be, if all I know about how mean, how nasty, how evil, how whatever it was I can be, I'd be able to get somebody else that same privilege. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? If all we know about who we were before we became uh, uh, Pastor Pete or uh, 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 Brother so anointed or Sister uh, Soldier, Sister Saved and all the other stuff, if all we know is, is who we used to be, we should be able to give somebody else the same benefit of the doubt, the same privilege, the same thing of being able to come to know the Lord. I want to pursue people like I want something, knowing what I know now, I'm going to pursue people like I wish people would pursue me when I didn't know them. I'm going to love them the way I needed love whenever I was out there doing God knows what. I'm going to give them wisdom of God the way I, I'm going to pray for them the way I wish somebody would. And I'm glad because it took a lot of folk to pray me into the kingdom. 
but we're dealing with the subject of self-control. And all you have to do is receive the love of God. Let me be clear about this. To receive the love of God. And once you receive the love of God and allow him to operate on the inside of you, then that love that you operate in will be an automatic response of self-control. Let me explain. It's like when the Holy Spirit comes on the inside of you, you shall receive power. Remember that? You shall receive power. What kind of power? To be a witness in Judea, Samaria, and the other most parts of the world. People in Judea were just like you. People in some, they were a little bit, Jerusalem were a little bit further away. People in Samaria weren't like you at all. In fact, we didn't even like them. And then the other parts of the world, it's some strange folk that we don't even know and could care less about. What does the Holy Spirit give you the power to do? To love those who are just like you. To love those who are a little bit like you, but a little different. You see, that's why Jesus told his disciples, he says, I want you to go into all the world and I want you to preach and do this and do that. And at first he said, don't go by way of the Gentiles. The reason why he said that was because he knew they didn't have the ability to love people who weren't like them. The power to end racism comes with the fulfillment of the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, when we receive the Holy Spirit, we can look, these signs will follow them that believe in my name. And when we receive Holy Spirit, the power to love comes in and, and, and causes us to do all these things and, and operate in the self-control that we need. And so we won't have to be able to, listen, let me, let me explain to you why I'm saying this. Because when we love God and Holy Spirit is on the inside of us, it will kick in the power to resist certain things. You can't tell, look, when you love God and you have to choose between God and looking at that thing on the internet, I promise you, when you, when you allow the Holy Spirit to control, that thing on the internet won't become an issue anymore. It stops becoming an issue when you learn to see it as something that separates you from God. When you love God, being tiptoe drunk and falling all over the place doesn't become an issue anymore because you put that, if I do this, it's going to hurt him. And it begins to become natural. When you love God, listen, when you love God, cheating on your wife stops becoming an issue because I got to, in order for me to cheat on her with this thing, person, I got to cheat on him. And when I cheat on him, I got to cheat on her. I got to cheat on my kids. I got to cheat on this. I got to cheat on that. When you love God, see, when you love God, you understand who God made you. I got to go a little further, so pray for me. Men who love God become aware of how valuable their seed is. And they don't put their seed just anywhere. Men who love God understand that they love God and they loving their God is the same and, and loving their wives is the same as Christ loving the church. It's a little simpler now when you put it that way. Women who love God, same thing. Because you can't talk to your husband any, other kind of, any old kind of way because your love for God dictates how you talk to people, including his son. Are y'all seeing where I'm going this? It's almost like when you get the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, it's like God put a chip on the inside of you that, that, that works and it connects you to a remote control. And now God can live on the inside of you and live through you. And so God would be walking. And how many of you have ever been going somewhere and the Holy Spirit, or, or what you call, something just said to me. Y'all know how we say that sometimes. I'm driving on this street and I'm driving down this street and something said to me, get off the interstate, make a left turn. Something said to me, slow down. Y'all ever say that? Something said to me, do this. Something said to me, it was Holy Spirit because he was on the inside of you. He could talk through you. Because some of you, you put enough word in you so that you can hear him more clearer. And then all of a sudden you get down the street and you find out later on in the news, there was an accident or a carjacking and this whatever on this street. And you'd be like, no, I was five minutes away from there. Yeah, and you would have been right dead in the middle of it had Holy Spirit not told you to stop, slow down, turn around, change your direction. Has Holy Spirit ever told you to stop and talk to somebody and say this or give you something to say? 
and you have no idea what's going to happen. And then sometimes you find out later how much of an issue, a thing that was. I'm telling you, if you allow him to speak to you and speak through you and begin to have control over your life, you'll find that things like that won't just be an every, uh, uh, every now and then thing. It'll begin to happen over and over and over and over again. Why? Because I'm yielded to Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit has a way of dealing with me. And I say, it's God, if you can use anything, use me. God, the songwriter says, whatever you're doing, don't do it without me. That is one of the sweetest things I believe Holy Spirit, the, the Father could ever hear. Is Father, whatever you're doing, I want to be a part of what you're doing. It's like a little kid jumping up and down, I believe, to him when the dad is cooking or doing something. Oh, I want to help. I want to help. I want to help. I'm telling you, when you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, self-control, if you yield to him, becomes easier. Self-control becomes easier because you're allowing him to live through you. A lot of us, well, some of us in the world have accepted him as Savior. We have no problems with that. But we haven't accepted him as Lord. There's a huge difference between Savior and Lord. Y'all know that, right? Savior. Let me give you a picture. Somebody drowning. Somebody jump in. I jump in. Or not me, I am. I, can't, I ain't the best swimmer in the world. Somebody jump in and they save them, even in peril of their own life. That's what you call a savior. He is the ultimate savior. But Lord takes on a whole different slant. Lord means if you tell me to go here, I'll go. If you tell me to do this, I'll do it. If you tell me to shut up, I'll shut up. If you tell me to talk, I'll talk. If you tell me to spend, I'll spend. If you tell me to receive, I'll receive. If you tell me to give, I give. If you tell me to move, I'll move. If you tell whatever you tell me to do, God, if I can confirm it, I do it. If you tell me to pray, God. There are people right now in the church. God told us to begin to pray almost three years ago. I think it was when COVID started. And they've been praying every day. From 12 to 12.30 ever since. They may miss a day every once in a while, but even when they miss a day, they're still praying off the phone. But every day, they call into a prayer line, two people pray, and then we agree, and then they close out like clockwork. And we've seen some amazing miracles happen over the last few years. Healing, deliverance, breakthroughs, you name it. But Holy Spirit, when he tells you to do something, you got to do it because you don't know the eternal weight that it could have on somebody or somebody's life. When Holy Spirit tells you to move, when Holy Spirit tells you to operate, when Holy Spirit tells you to function, when Holy Spirit tells you to do something or get out of the way or whatever it is, a part of that self-control is allowing him the ability to be able to move you whenever he needs to move you into something or out of something or do this or do that. Holy Spirit, when he tells you to function in a way, we got to begin to function in a way. And I thank God for people who are, are, are doing that. Thank God for people who are doing that. Listen, self-control is an amazing thing when you learn how to operate in it. Sometimes we operate in self-control and we think we're taking a loss, but really we're not. You know how you, the stronger one is the one who operates in self-control. I don't know how to fully explain to you what I'm trying to get across when it comes to that. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, the self-control is more than just with being religious. Don't, don't, don't make that mistake of thinking, being religious is having self-control because it's not. I'm telling you, being submitted to Holy Spirit is what gives you self-control. Because Holy Spirit may tell you to do something that don't line up with what religious people think you should be doing. Holy Spirit will tell you to do something. Sometimes he'll tell you to go somewhere and talk to somebody where it don't seem like Christian folks should go. Ask Jesus. Jesus went to a lot of places that, that, that believers didn't think he should be. And he ministered to many people that religious folk didn't think he should be at. 
and he healed in a lot of ways that religious folk didn't think he should heal. What was that? Listen, when you and I yield to Holy Spirit, when you and I yield to Holy Spirit, the results are eternal. I'm telling you, if you want to start receiving eternal results for the things you do, start yielding your life to Holy Spirit and saying, Holy Spirit, whatever you need me to do, lead me and I'll follow. If you give me the unction, Holy Spirit, lead me. And let me be clear, Holy Spirit is not going to tell you to do something that don't line up with the word. Holy Spirit, when he tells you to do something, I can promise you it's going to line up with the word of God because you would never find God out of order with himself. And so if we can begin to operate, remember, love, joy, peace, patience. If you operate in self-control, it's impossible to operate in self-control without operating in, in kindness. A soft answer turns away what? Wrath. A kind word will speak in somebody's life will speak volume. It's all a part of self-control. Everything starts off in love. It starts off in love. It's like bookends, and it ends in you having self-control. Or as I can say, spirit control, because the whole self-control is really nothing more than the Holy Spirit guiding you. I don't know, I don't know what else to say. But if we learn to operate in that thing, if we learn to operate in that thing. Self-control will give you better control of your finances. Why? Because if you understand the purpose of your funds and you understand what the Holy Spirit intends for you financially, then you have better control over even your money. You have better control over your body. When I started doing this, the Holy Spirit started convicting me about, yeah, I understand you got injured in a war, but we're not going to use that as an excuse for you not to exercise, sir. Oh, he nailed me on that one. I understand that you got injured in a war, and I understand that sometimes this hurts and that hurts, but you still can find ways to exercise. I'm going to show you some of them. Come, let's do some research. The Holy Spirit's been showing me research on what to do, what not to do, what to eat, what not to eat, what, what to put in. You understand what I'm saying? Because Holy Spirit intends for you to have victory in every area of your life. And when Holy Spirit brings something up, don't ignore it. Have the self-control to deal with it. For some of you, we keep dealing with the same thing over and over and over again in your life because when Holy Spirit bring it up, you won't deal with it. You push it back down. And there are some things that keeps coming up in your life the Holy Spirit wants you to deal with. The Holy Spirit is bring. When Holy Spirit brings stuff up, he's not bringing it up to hold you at bay. He's bringing it up. He says, now you're ready. Let's go ahead and kill this monster once and for all. This thing that was done to you years ago, we're going to kill it right now. We're going we gonna to put that zombie in the, we're going to put it back where it belongs. And so when, when the Holy Spirit, I'm asking Holy Spirit, when he brings things to your remembrance, begin to plead the blood of Jesus over it. I don't know who that was for because that was not in, the, in any of the notes. When Holy Spirit begins to bring things up to your remembrance, ask him how to deal with it and begin to pray through it. And if you have to get somebody else to help you pray through it, So be it. But that is a part of the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, meekness, and self-control. I'm going to close. I want you to stand. When my wife and I, when co-pastor and I show up to people's houses, a lot of times if we have to do marriage counseling or marriage counseling, especially if it's in the midst of turmoil, we ask a few questions. We ask, have you been operating in the fruit of the Spirit? But then we ask an important question. We say, the Bible says this, before you give us any excuse about what the other person is doing, this is what I want to know. Love is patient. And we ask, have you been patient with your spouse? Love is kind. Have you been kind? No, before you start saying what they did and how they left their clothes on the floor or did whatever it is they're doing, just ask them, have you been kind though? 
before you put out what the other person did, you and you and you, both of you, just ask it. Just, just, you don't even have to answer to me. Just ask yourself the question. Look at that person and just ask yourself, have I been, have I been kind to him? Have I been selfish? Have I been easily provoked? See, scripture says love keeps no account of the wrong done to it. Have you been keeping a record or a score of the things that you do and the things that they do and don't do? Love bears all. Have you been bearing with them? Love believes all. Have you been believing for them? Love conquers all. Love never fails. And see, and usually by the time you finish asking all those questions, a lot of times what the other person did kind of pales in comparison because just the response was lacking. I do it to myself. Not, and let me be clear, it's not for the purpose of bringing condemnation, but there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. But it's for the purpose of being redemptive. And I say this all the time. If I was to bring Mike up here and I was to ask Mike to, to hug his wonderful wife, Shonda, and I was to bring him up here, he would quickly notice that there's a chair in between and I can promise you one of the first things either Mike or Shonda would do is remove that chair from between them, right? That's what sin is between you and God. That's what your past and the things that you hold up between you and God is. And a part of the Holy Spirit's job is to call those things to remembrance, to have you operate in enough self-control so that you can remove those things from between the two of you. That's all it is. Sometimes we make things harder than what it has to be. When you lift your hands up and say, God, I'm available to you. Holy Spirit, have your way. Sometimes we can even just be honest and say, Holy Spirit, I have no idea what I'm doing. Can you, can you throw a brother? I, I said this to the Holy Spirit. Can you throw a brother a bone? Can you help me out, please? And thank you in advance because I'm struggling. I want to do this, 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 and this, and this, and this but I submit my will to you. The next time this situation comes up, can you provide me a way of escape? Can you do this for me? Can you help me with it? And I promise you, Holy Spirit will help. The next time the enemy brings something up in your life, in your past, then recognize Holy Spirit. I lay hands on myself and I say this and I speak this. Speak over those things. Speak over those things. Pray. I think one of the things we have to realize as the people of God that God is so real. I think we pass this thing off as it's just a religious thing where we just do every Sunday. He's an everyday God. Everyday Holy Spirit, everyday Father, everyday Son. But we pass it off as if God is not alive, and I promise you, He is. And if we would allow His Spirit to rest and rule on the inside of us and say, Holy Spirit, have your way in my life. God, have your way in the things around me. Have your way in the things that bother me. I give you my permission to reign and rule over me to reign through me, use my strength to your glory. Use my weaknesses to your glory. And I promise you, he will. I said all that to try to simplify it and say all that self-control really is, is being yielded to the Holy Spirit. Self-control will never fully come until you're yielded to the Father. Now, while I was speaking, maybe somebody who may have came up with something or somebody, maybe a thought from your past or maybe a thought about something that you need help with being self-controlled in. For some of you, it may be your finances. For some of you, it may be um, in an area of a lust or it may be in an area of whatever it is. But if that's you, you don't have to take long, but I want to get somebody to come and pray for you. 
If there's an area in your life, any one of these fruits that you need help in, all I want you to do is just say, Father, I yield to you. Help me with my temper. Help me with whatever it is. Just like that, the Holy Spirit will move on your behalf. If there's an area in your life, even other than that, where you need prayer, maybe there's something that you need to see, or maybe that you believe in God for something, no matter what it is, just slip up your hands real quick. If there's an area in your life where you need prayer, I see one. If there's an area in your life where you need prayer. There's an area in your life where you need prayer. Only on here. If there's an area in your life where you need prayer. If there's an area in your life where you need prayer. Satan, I bind you right now in the name of Jesus. We bind you. The Father binds you. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. I speak life over your people. Father, I speak that the fruit of the Spirit, that your Holy Spirit would inhabit your people. I pray, God, for a stronger relationship with you. I pray, God, for a stronger relationship with you, Father. I pray, God, that our relationship would be strong, so strong that it would affect even our natural circumstances. I pray, Father, that our relationship with you would be so strong that it would affect the things that we say and the things that we do. I pray for an impartation and a divine revelation of your will in our lives. God, I thank you, God, that you are healing us. I thank you, God, that everything that we struggle with, Father, I thank you, God, that it is finished in your name. And so, God, I thank you, God, for the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. God, I thank you, God, that even with me, Father, as I yield more to your Holy Spirit, that you take away the things that I deal with, the things that I struggle with. So God, we praise you. We honor you, Father. We lift you up. We magnify your name. God, there is none like you. God, we celebrate your greatness. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way, have your way. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. We're going to close in just a second, and then I'm going to turn it over to co pastor. And she's going to start letting you know what we're going to have to do for the day. But look. I want you guys to know, and I'm so serious. I sense so strongly that God loves you. I really do. And that he's always desiring to connect with stronger with you. God's desire is for you to draw close to him and for him to draw close to you. No matter what our past looked like, no matter what our present looked like, no matter even what we're doing, God's desire is for us to draw close to him. Remember, it's not his will that anybody should perish, but it all would come and have everlasting life. And that everlasting life starts with a relationship with him. And it's fulfilled with a relationship with him. With his leading, with his loving. So no matter what you're going through or what you've gone through, just know that God is concerned about you. I promise he is. 
and he loves you. Father, I pray for your people. God, I pray that they would experience, even if we dealt with self-control and the fruit of the Spirit, that they would walk in surrenderance to you. That their love that they display towards you would be a sign that you have the governance over their lives. God, I thank you for each and every one of your people, God, that even as we get together, Father, the control that you and love that you have over us individually would help us even corporately, Father, as a group of people. God, I thank you, Father, that the prayers of the righteous does avail much. And so, God, I speak life over all of your people that as we begin to pray to you and pray for each other, that you will answer our prayers. And so, God, we bless you. I speak life over your people that they'll be blessed in the city. They'll be blessed in the field. They'll be blessed whenever they come and whenever they go. I speak that whenever their enemies come at them, they'll come at them one way to three and seven. Or I speak that they will come back and be your friends and serve God with you. God, we love you. You're an awesome God. And we praise you and we thank you in advance. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Listen, go in peace and enjoy the favor of the Lord. I'm going to call up uh, my honey while you guys are talking, and she's going to tell you what we're going to be doing to get ready. All right. Good afternoon. For those of you. Uh, we are going to have pizza um, to eat. I know that many of us have several things that uh, we're used to going.